Welcome back, guys. So I've had this lumber mill for about a month and a half. I've used it a lot. You can see all the scrap piled up behind me. Anywhere from milling some planks for the decking, milling the board and batten for the pump house. It seems like I'm looking for a reason to mill out some lumber. Stick around for a minute. I'll tell you the things I like about it and the things I don't like about it. So this is a Norwood LM29 lumber mate. They have smaller lumber mills and they have bigger lumber mills than this one in particular. Less expensive ones and more expensive ones. <clears throat> I picked the middle of the road because of the diameter log it could mill. I've got a few bigger trees out back on the back side of my property and if I ever go to chop them down, I would like to have a lumber mill that could mill them. I believe this one can do a 27 inch log, 27 inches around, and it can mill a plank that's 22 inches wide. So it's got a pretty decent size to it. A couple things I like about it, I like the fact that when I got it, it was really easy to put together. Myself and my wife put it together in our spare time, it took a few days, it wasn't stressful. We figured out a couple little quirks. It works great. You level it, you line the blade up to the, the crossbars, make sure all the crossbars are the same distance away from the blade. Mills out fine every time. This machine is an easy machine to use. You got your push bar over here, you got your throttle right here underneath it, you got your water. Your valve to adjust your water, how much water is coming on your blade to keep it cool. One thing I've learned about this, more water is better. I used to just have it trickle on the blade and I noticed the blade was walking up and down. When I added more water, it stayed straighter, more level. And I think what that is, I think with less water, the blade's heating up more and as metal heats, it expands and it adds a little bit of slop to that blade. So it lets that blade kind of fluctuate a little bit as it's cutting. So more water is probably better, in my opinion. It gives a straighter cut. You've got your emergency stop switch here. You've got your depth gauge. It's easy to use. Measurements on the side, we'll get into that in a minute. That's one aspect of this machine I love. I don't know if every machine out there has something like that, but it's got a, a whole grid that's quick and easy. Once you set it, you start ripping boards. Once you, you get your little line set, you can just rip boards one after another without thinking about it. The one thing that's a little bit further away as far as controls on this machine is your main on off switch. Now you've got your kill switch over here in case something goes bad. Your on off switch, the one you're supposed to use on a regular basis, is right here. Now if you push this machine all the way to the end, you're stepping over the track to turn your machine off. So it's a little bit out of the way, but it's just, it's a design of the motor. There's nothing you can really do about that. That's not Norwood's design. That's where Kohler put the off switch for their motor. So this is your measurement guide or depth gauge of your blade. This measures up from the bottom. So this is two inches up off the bottom. As you go down, as the machine comes up, this gets thicker. So this measures from the bottom up. These measure from the top down. This is three quarter inch or three quarter scale. That's one inch, four of four is one inch. Six of four, inch and a half. Four of four, two inches and then nine eighths. You've got your lumber production table up top, which I haven't really got into too much. The red line here goes with this far measurement over here, these inches over here. That's how far it is from the bottom. So right now, if you were to mill something, it would be six and three quarter inches thick on the bottom. That would be what was left. If you're milling from the bottom up, 
you would use this scale over here. If what you want left on the mill, you want six and three quarter inches, you'd use that red line, line it up to six and three quarter, mill it. What's on the bottom would be six and three quarter inches thick. It takes into account the thickness of the blade. As long as your blade is the same height off the deck all the way down, it'll be true to that. This blue line is adjustable. Loosen this and you can move it. Now they make it adjustable because you'll square out your board and then if you want to rip a one inch thick board off the top, you'll set this on one of these four marks and you tighten it down. Then you lower it to the next four and it lowers it just a little bit more than an inch. Just the width of the blade more. So what you have left on top after you make that cut, you make that pass, the board you pull off the top is one inch thick. If you move it over here, say you want an inch and a half, you go by the sixes, six quarters. Makes it really easy to rip boards out fast after you've squared out your board and you have it locked down. You can rip it, pull it off the top, drop this down, rip another pass. I love this scale. This scale works fast for me. Took me a minute to kind of get the ins and outs of it because I couldn't find a video that explained it. But here it is. It's simple. That's how it works. So the blade's inside here. Good thing is, you can get to it really quick and easy. You pull these tabs off, pop both these off, take your blade out, put a new blade in. The thing I don't like about it, this whole thing is plastic. It's a very sharp blade. And I've snapped two of these bands, which leaves me with little marks inside this plastic casing. More on that other side than this side, but when that blade breaks or comes off, those teeth just rip into this plastic. I can only imagine after you've broken about 10 blades, you've got some pretty good marks in here and maybe even some spots that have worn through. I don't know if it'd be better if it was metal. If it was metal and the blade came off, you wouldn't be able to put the blade back on because the blade would rub against the metal and it would dull it and it'd be worthless. So it's kind of a toss up. Do you want a plastic one to save your blade? Or do you want a metal one in case your blade breaks it doesn't come through the plastic? So the machine has two of these log stops. Nice stout piece of bar. It's got a quick release down here. It takes about a half turn. You can adjust it, the height on it two set screws in the back so you can adjust the pivot of this so it's exactly perpendicular to the bottom. So when you go to square up your log, rest it up, up against here, it's going to be perpendicular, it's going to be a nice square. After you've squared it up, you got this side back here. This is just enough to catch that squared log. It's not too much to get in the way of your blade, but it's not too short so your log pops up over it. I haven't had a log pop up over this yet. Set it right down there on your squared log right up against it. So this is your main dogging system. The main clamping system to clamp your log to your ladder. I'm not super happy with it. It seems to work pretty good when you first roll a log up and you've got a big, something big and substantial to work with. It seems to bite into it and work with the, the friction that it's supposed to work with. But you start getting down on the smaller stuff, it doesn't want to work with it. It doesn't want to stay tight. I've had it get loose and just fall straight down, mid-cut. It hasn't affected any of my cuts yet, having it fall out but I'm also not pushing super hard. I'm not trying to force the machine so it's not pushing the log. I just let the machine ease through the log. So maybe that's why when this thing is falling out, it hasn't affected a cut. It's not a 
Not a good thing though to have your, your locking mechanism fall out. Now this is another dogging system that they use. This is another dogging system that's used for the smaller stuff. It's a good idea, the theory behind it. It bites in real good. But there again, I've had it come loose and fall out. And that leaves your log, especially small stuff, loose on the top here. And the smaller it is, the less weight it has to hold it in place, the more it's gonna move. This is Norwood's log loading system. I paid extra for it. I wouldn't send it back. The bigger logs, the logs I can't just pick one end up at a time or ones I don't feel like loading up on the forks of my backhoe and trying to roll off real gentle onto this thing. This thing works like a champ. It's got plenty of cable, two ramps, cable goes out, goes around the log, comes back, locks into the bench, two different speeds at which you can crank a log up on here. The log's just big enough you can't pick it up. Use the bottom one. It reels it in real quick. This top one over here is for the bigger logs. The logs that are really heavy. You don't want to strain your arm. Put it over here. It takes a little bit longer to crank them in, but it's still really, really easy. I like this addition to the machine. This little hook comes with it. It's for wrapping around the log so you can roll it on the machine. So when you've got a big log, you can't just roll. Hook this on and roll it. Now this slides in further in on the machine so that when you're using it, it doesn't have this long arm that it's flexing. But you push it out here, swivel it out of the way. You don't have to worry about taking the whole thing off when you're milling your log. So your water tank sits up high, gravity fed. It's out of the way, it's low profile, holds a good amount of water. I can mill out a whole log with the water pouring out pretty good and I won't run out of water. The one thing I do wish that they had added on here, they've got a chain to keep this from falling out, but they have no filter, no little removable filter to catch little debris that might be in your bucket as you're pouring it in here. I mean, if you're buying gallon jugs of water to pour in here, you're spending a lot of money. The majority of people I'm thinking are going to fill a five gallon bucket and pour it in the top. That's what I do. But now I've got some sediment in the bottom of my bucket here, bottom of my jug. And over time, that's going to plug this system. So a little filter up on top to filter your water you're pouring in might be something you'd want to look into getting. I know I'm looking into getting something, maybe a funnel with a paper filter. I'll figure something out because I can't keep dumping water in here and having debris in the bottom. It's not going to work out long term. So down to your track system. I can't find any flaws in the track system of this machine. It's really sturdy. It's really smooth. Even at your joints right here. There's a joint right here. It's nice and smooth. I haven't filed any of these down. And they say you can. If you find a, a little bump as you're rolling it back and forth, it hits these and has a little bump. They say you can take a file to it and just knock it down real quick. I haven't had to do any of that. So I don't know if all bandsaws have this stabilizer wheel that slides in and out for the width of the log you're milling, but it seems to work pretty good. Move it in when you're cutting something thin and it keeps that, that blade right there nice and steady. Move it out, out of the way when you're doing your first cuts on your log to square it up. It's out of the way. You don't have to worry about it. So as you can see, it gets almost all the way out of the way, which lets you mill something fairly large. That's where it gets the 27 inch log. The Norwood Company is based in Canada. Super helpful people. Had any questions? Like anytime I called them. Before I ordered the machine, I must have called them three times with questions. Always got answers. Realistic answers. Not just a, a fake, yeah, yeah, it'll do that, no problem. I got realistic answers. I got specs on the different machines. I got prices on the different machines. 
additions, what I could put on each machine as an addition later. As far as I know, all their additional equipment can go on this machine and the next machine up. I don't know about their smaller machine, but I know this machine, you don't have to order it with everything all at once. You want the log loading system a year or two later, you can order it and bolt it on. There's a couple other additional pieces of equipment you can order this for this machine and you don't have to order it right away. You can kind of grow with the machine. The questions I had, realistic answers, I can't say anything bad about the company. They've always had super friendly people on the phone. They can always answer the questions. It's just a good company to work with. The machine itself, I wouldn't trade it in. Even the little things that, that not having the filter on the water bottle. It's minor, super minor. The plastic fan shroud, or the plastic blade shroud, it's a minor inconvenience. Like I said, if you had a metal one and your blade just came off, your blade would be ruined. But when your blade breaks and it makes big gouges on the inside of your plastic, the blade's already trashed. Now it's trashing the plastic. So it's kind of a toss up. What do you want to do? I think I'll stick with the plastic. I know the plastic pieces you can buy. I don't know how expensive they are, but I know you can buy them. So after I break uh, 10 or 20 blades and I get a hole in it, maybe I'll buy another one. I love this machine though. It does a great job at milling lumber. Once you get used to your measurement gauge on the side, you can mill it quick. So if you're looking for a sawmill, look at one of these. Look at the LM29 made by Norwood. I love this machine. I use it as much as I can. It's been a while since I've done a tool review, but I felt I needed to do one on this machine. You guys will see it a lot on this homestead. I'll be milling out a lot of lumber. So I figured I'd let you guys know what I'm using. If you like this video, you like this channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell for notifications. Smash that like button for me. Help this video get out there. Help our channel get out there and get seen. Leave a comment, even if it's just to say hello. Until next time, guys, go make something.